In this technical, we'll cover one of the biggest infectious challenges to livestock in the UK, and also one of the biggest success stories, clostridial diseases. Clostridial diseases are a group of diseases all caused by the same group of bacteria, which unsurprisingly, start their name with clostridium. This clan of bugs causes a range of different diseases and they have a few common features. The first is that they come with a collection of very descriptive and dare I say it, old fashioned names that sound like they've walked straight out of a medieval textbook. Pulpy kidney, braxy, blackleg, gas gangrene, malignant edema, lockjaw, and the list goes on, all seemingly named to bamboozle first year vet students. The next common feature of these bugs is that they all originate in the soil, they all form spores which are very hard to kill and they are all ubiquitous, by which I mean they occur everywhere. It's very common for certain farms or even certain fields on certain farms to be affected more severely with clostridial disease over the years. But nonetheless, these bacteria occur everywhere. That increased incidence is not necessarily reflective of what's there in the field. The final and probably most pertinent feature of these bugs and their diseases is that they typically strike severely and suddenly, whether that is directly through infection or through the toxins they produce. The major clinical presenting sign for a clostridial disease case is sudden death. This puts clostridial diseases in the same ominous category as pasteurolosis, anthrax, and lightning strike. Often there is some trigger, some stressor to cause cases of clostridial diseases. Sometimes that's an injury that triggers them, whether that's a kick, a wound, fluke damage to the liver, for example. Sometimes it can be extremes of weather. Braxy, for example, seems to be triggered by sheep eating frosted forage. Sometimes it can be a change in diet, and sometimes counterintuitively, high growth, which otherwise reflects a thriving animal, can appear to be a stressor Typically, it's the fastest growing, otherwise very healthy stock that seem to get struck down by clostridial diseases. Humans get clostridial disease too. Think tetanus, think botulism, think C. diff. Again, often there is a stressor of some description. Tetanus, classically, is someone stepping on a rusty nail and setting up a lovely anaerobic wound in which tetanus can reproduce. So this is a clutch of deadly diseases that strike without warning, that kill animals before we get a chance to treat them and occur in the soil everywhere. Is there any good news? Actually, there is some, and that is clostridial vaccines. There are several of these. I've put up here what's licensed currently in the UK for livestock. That will change if you're watching the video sometime in the future. Obviously, go and talk to a vet if you're thinking about using a clostridial vaccine or making a change as to which one you use. Clostridial vaccines were among the first widely used vaccines in livestock. They're still widely used today and they are very effective. AHDB, that's the levy board for farmers in England, reckons that somewhere between 60 and 70 percent on average of sheep in the UK are vaccinated with some sort of clostridial vaccine. I couldn't find any figures for cattle, though I suspect that would be significantly lower, which I find quite surprising given that cattle are on paper worth so much more than sheep. The immunity provided by clostridial vaccines appears to be very long lasting, and by giving breeding females a booster pre-lambing or pre-calving, we can provide lambs and calves with a solid immunity that can easily protect them until their first vaccination. The duration of clostridial immunity via colostrum in lambs is estimated to be around three months or so. Of course, that is dependent on them getting a good dose of colostrum to start with. Last but not least, these vaccines are also damn good value. The usual conditions of vaccine use apply. Keep them cool during transit, storage and use. Read the data sheet or check the NOAA app or ask your vet about how they are meant to be used properly. The dosing regime. Very often they require a primary course of two injections a certain number of weeks apart followed by an annual booster. Other pitfalls we commonly see include forgetting to do breeding males and leaving them exposed to clostridial disease, not boosting ewe lambs or yearling heifers, giving the pre-lambing or pre-calving dose either too far away or too close up. Like I say, if you're in any doubt about if you're getting the most out of these vaccines, have a quick chat to your vet about it. These vaccines, probably on the basis that they are among the most widely used, are also among the most widely abused. Bear this in mind if you're ever buying stock described as being on a certain system. For peace of mind, you might want to restart or boost animals brought into quarantine. Again, talk to your vet about that one. The vaccines in some way appear to have been a victim of their own success. Because of vaccination, these diseases are now relatively rare, and you do occasionally hear someone grumble that they wonder why they're doing it. For context, 
Some of you might have heard of the Morden Institute. It was founded just over 100 years ago by Scottish farmers because back then, like I said, only about 100 years ago, it's estimated that about a third of lambs in Scotland were lost to disease, of which Braxy and other clostridial diseases will have been a very big portion. In terms of prevention, aside from vaccines, the other thing we can do is try and minimize stress. Now that's gonna have heaps of other benefits out with clostridial diseases. So handling animals sympathetically, not cramming in heaps of procedures all in a short window. For you farmers out there, I'm sure this stuff is common sense, but sometimes it can be good to affirm it. There are good reasons not to rush, not to stress animals out. Saying that, some of these stresses are outside of our control, injury and bad weather. And sometimes the stressor is something we're actually chasing or engineering like fast growth or a change in diet. In that case, trying to vaccinate them in anticipation of a challenge is going to be important. So that's clostridial diseases, a nasty bunch of conditions, but they can be effectively foiled through vaccination and stress management. I'm sure a lot of you are using them already if not, go and talk to your vet about it. And of course, if something drops down dead, don't feel like you need to chalk it up to bad luck or livestock simply having a death wish. Seriously consider having it investigated. That's it for this one. I hope that was useful. If you did find it useful, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Otherwise, I will see you next time.